Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today we celebrate the memorial of St. Kashmir. St. Kashmir lived from 1461 to 1484. He was the second son of King Kazimir IV of Poland. Now, he was meant to be an heir to the Polish throne, and had an, but at an early age, in childhood, he dedicated his life to God. He was the third of 13 children, and he was tutored by a man named John Dlugosz. And his holiness of John inspired Kashmir. And Kashmir desired to live a simple life, so he rebelled against the riches of his state and dressed in all but the plainest of clothes. He slept very little, and he spent his nights involved in deep prayer. And he was sent by his father to take over the throne of Hungary. So he was sent along with, with a military force to forcibly take the throne of Hungary in the town of Buda, which is later in the 19th century combined with Pest and became Budapest as we know today. And Kashmir, St. Kashmir, thought it was wrong to do this, but he didn't want to disobey his father either, so he was kind of conflicted. And he went along with it reluctantly, up until he heard that Pope Sixtus IV opposed this move, so he bailed out on it. So in order to teach him a lesson, his father um, exiled him, banished him to a castle in Dbozhki. And while he was exiled there, he prayed, he studied, and he helped the poor in his community. So he spent his time in holy endeavors and he died of lung disease at the age of 23 in 1484. And his favorite hymn was Daily, Daily, Sing to Mary. And we know that today is the Song of St. Kashmir. Even though he didn't write it, it's still attributed to him because of his devotion to that song. And so today we ask St. Kashmir to pray for us. And so let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, bless us with the wisdom to praise you in spirit and in truth, so that by following your holy will, we may gain eternal salvation. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, let us take a moment, confess our sins to God in ways that we have failed him and our neighbor in thought, word, and deed, so that we may worthily participate in this holy sacrifice. Please now make an examination of your conscience. Let's say together the first form of the confidier. I confess, oh, Almighty Father, you know my deepest secrets. I confess that I have, through my own fault, sinned against your holy laws. In my thoughts, in my words, and what I have done or failed to do. I sincerely regret my sins, and I am truly sorry for offending you. I ask, Father, that in your mercy you pardon my sins. I promise to change my way of living so that, through a deeper holiness, I may better serve you throughout the rest of my life. I ask the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. For your penance, I would ask you to say two Hail Marys. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And may our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me, I absolve you from all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The mouths of the just utter wisdom, their tongues speak what is right. God's teaching is in their hearts, their steps do not falter. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, 
world without end. Amen. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Christ eleison, Christ eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, you protected and strengthened St. Kashmir with moral perfection in the midst of kingly delights and the world's allurements. Through his intercession, we ask you that your faithful may reject earthly things and ever aspire to those of heaven. We ask this through your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, I consider everything as a loss because of the supreme good of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have accepted the loss of all things, and I consider them so much rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having any righteousness of my own based on the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God depending on faith to know him and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by being conformed to his death. If somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead, it is not that I have already taken hold of it or have already attained perfection, perfect maturity, but I continue my pursuit in hope that I may possess it since I have indeed been taken possession of by Christ Jesus. Brothers and sisters, I, for my part, do not consider myself to have taken possession. Just one thing, forgetting what lies behind, but straining forward to what lies ahead, I continue my pursuit toward the goal, the prize of God's upward calling in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response is, The just one shall live on your holy mountain, O Lord. The just one shall live on your holy mountain, O Lord. He who walks blamelessly and does justice, who thinks the truth in his heart and slanders not with his tongue, the just one shall live on your holy mountain, O Lord, who harms not his fellow man, nor takes up a reproach against his neighbor, by whom the reprobate is despised, while he honors those who fear the Lord. The just one shall live on your holy mountain, O Lord, who lends not his money at usury, and accepts no bribe against the innocent. He who does these things shall never be disturbed. The just one shall live on your holy mountain, O Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. I give you a new commandment. Love one another, as I have loved you. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. May Almighty God cleanse my heart and my lips so I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Jesus said to his disciples, As the Father loves me, so I also 
love you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love. Just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and your joy might be complete. This is my commandment. Love one another as I love you. No one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I no longer call you slaves because a slave does not know what his master is doing. I have called you friends because I have told you everything I have heard from my father. It was not you who chose me, but I who chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit that will remain so that whatever you ask the father in my name he may give you. This I command you, love one another. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, as I mentioned at the beginning and gave the biography of today, we, sell, we remember St. Cashmere. And I think there's a lot we can learn from St. Cashmere, and the readings today kind of parse this out for us as well. So if we remember, St. Cashmere was one who rejected all the trappings of riches, of being the son of a king, a prince, if you will. And there's many allurements to these things that we can have because m many of us have an attachment to material things. We want to keep acquiring more money, more possessions, even more power. The St. Cashmere stands out in the fact that he not only rejected the trappings, the exterior trappings of being a king, he also rejected the power because he was being given the throne of the neighboring country of Hungary by his father. And at first he went along, not because he wanted it, but out of obedience, following the fourth commandment of honoring your father and your mother. But what his father wanted wasn't what the father, God, wanted. And God's will came to him through the opposition of this action by Pope Sixtus IV. So listening to the Bishop of Rome and God speaking to the Bishop of Rome to him because of his faith, he backed out. He no longer wanted to continue his acquisition of the throne of Hungary. And in our letter that Paul writes to the people of Philippi, for his sake I have accepted the loss of all things, and I consider them so much rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in him. St. Cashmere put rubber to the road on these exact words. St. Cashmere saw all of these allurements of the world as nothing but rubbish and rejected them in favor of Christ and each, the eternal life that Christ offers us. And it goes even deeper than that. In our gospel, Jesus says to his disciples, firstly, love one another as I love you. That is a call to us even today. But more than that, no one has greater love than this than to lay down one's life for one's friends. And then he calls his disciples his friends because they do what he commands. My brothers and sisters in Christ, if we truly are brothers and sisters in Christ, then we do what Jesus commands, and we are his friends. Our divine friendship begins in our baptism, and it continues through our life if we allow it to, 
and continue to follow his commands. But if we go against his commands and we fall into the allures and trappings of this world, then we fall in to the rubbish that Paul threw out. So easy for us to follow earthly leaders who have earthly aspirations, who have forgotten the true meaning of life, which is to follow Christ and gain eternal life, not the trappings of this temporary world, but the riches of the eternal kingdom with God. St. Kashmir understood that, even at a young age and dying at the tender age of 23. He is venerated today as a saint throughout the whole church, not just Poland and Hungary, but the whole church because of his dedication, singular dedication to Christ. Would that we be known in the same way, maybe not being canonized, but acquiring the level of sainthood, which is communion with God forever, just because we follow his commandments and he deigns to call us his friends. Is it not better to be a friend of Jesus than a friend of the world which is ruled by Satan? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. To God the Father we make a sacrifice of thanksgiving. Counting on his unfailing mercy, we stand before him now with our needs. And our response is, Lord, have mercy. For Prime Bishop Anthony, Bishop Jerry, and all bishops, priests, and deacons, and also that the church may be a source of transfigured life, radiating the light of Christ and the hope of the resurrection, we pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For all U.S. and world leaders, that they make their decisions in the light of the truth of Christ and justice that characterize God's glory and kingdom, and for an end to the twin evils of abortion and euthanasia, we pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. That the Lenten fast may shatter the yokes of sin, poverty, hunger, and homelessness in our world, we pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For all who are unemployed or underemployed, that they may be blessed to find suitable work that will provide for their needs and the needs of their families, we pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For all those who are ill and for all those on our parish prayer list, that God may feel the Father's love through the efforts of our prayers and the help of caring professionals, we pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For the intention of this holy mass, which is for the conversion of our nation, we pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For all of our beloved dead and those who will die today, that they may be at the peace in the splendor of the heavenly kingdom, we pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. Most merciful Father, you did not spare your own son, but handed him over for us. We trust that you will hear our prayers, both spoken and unspoken, and will always give us what we need. Keep us true to you. We ask all these things through your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Happy are those who fear the Lord, who greatly delight in God's commands. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. 
may it become for us the bread of life. But the mystery of this wine and water, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, may it become our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Come, Holy Spirit, and bless this sacrifice, which we have prepared for the glory of your holy name. Lord, wash away my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin. Receive this offering, most holy Trinity, which we make in memory of the passion, resurrection, and ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ, and in honor of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints. May they whose memory we honor on earth intercede for us in heaven. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the benefit of his holy church. Lord, our God, that the intercession of St. Kashmir may our gifts now offered in this holy rite cleanse and protect us. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Today we celebrate the memory of St. Kashmir, who throughout life proclaimed your glory by walking in the footsteps of Jesus loving you and his neighbor, and abounding in faith and good works. Following the example of St. Kashmir, may we strengthen our faith, live holier lives, and practice greater charity, so that one day we may be united with you in your heavenly kingdom. Therefore, with the angels and archangels, with all the saints and the entire church, we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy Sacrifice of the Mass continues with Eucharistic Prayer 5, which is found on page 92 if you are following along. Blessed are you, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Father of mercy and God of all consolation. For you so loved the world that you gave your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He then established a lasting memorial of your salvation. On the evening in which he willingly surrendered himself, he took bread, gave you thanks, blessed it, and broke it, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. When supper had ended, he took the cup in the same way he gave you thanks and blessed it, saying, Take this, all of you and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me.
so. We recall before you, Father, the incarnation of your Son, his words and deeds, how he humbled himself and obediently accepted death, even death on a cross. Therefore you have raised him up and given him a name which is above every name, so that in heaven and under the earth every knee shall bow and every tongue proclaim to the glory of God the Father, Jesus Christ is Lord. We offer this sacrifice of your Son before you, Father, with praise and thanksgiving and ask that you accept this oblation. Send your Holy Spirit and fill these gifts with his life-giving power that they may be for us the body and blood of your dearly beloved Son. Grant that the bread which we break may be the body of our Lord and the cup over which we give thanks may be one with the blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. The company of Mary, the mother of God, with your apostles and martyrs, Holy Willibrod, Cashmere, and all the saints. Together with Anthony, our prime bishop, and Jerry, our bishop, and with all bishops, priests, and deacons, as well as your whole church, we praise and glorify you and look forward to the coming of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> Let us pray together with confidence to the Father in the words our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. May the union of divinity and humanity in Jesus Christ bring us sanctification and eternal life. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace. My peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. On you stay, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. On you stay, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. On you stay, Qui tolis peccata mundi, dona nobis pacem. Let's say together the second communion prayer. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for my judgment or condemnation. Though I am unworthy to receive this great sacrament through your loving kindness, may it become my safeguard and healing remedy. My saving master, awaken in me a living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make me your willing servant, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite me entirely with you, my Lord and my God. I will take the bread of heaven and call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring me to everlasting life.
May the blood of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Please join me now in the act of spiritual communion. Most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. I embrace you and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and Savior. Amen. Lord, may I possess with a pure heart that which I have taken as food, and may the gift I have received bring me healing and strength now and forever. Everyone who has given up houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or children or land for the sake of my name will receive a hundred times more and will inherit eternal life. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, having received heavenly nourishment, may we, through the intercession of St. Kashmir, your confessor, be protected against all harm and danger. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you now and forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me now in the prayer of St. Michael. Holy Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do you, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who wander through the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Please join me now in a prayer for peace in our world, country, state, and localities, and especially in Myanmar, for the prayer of St. Francis. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there's hatred, let me sow love. Where there's injury, pardon. Where there's doubt, faith. Where there's despair, hope. Where there's darkness, light. And where there's sadness, joy. O oh, Divine Master, Grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, thank you so much for joining us today for our daily Mass. We invite you to join us on Sunday at 9 a.m. for the third Sunday in Lent. And I would encourage you, if you have been reluctant to come in person, to please take that step. Because Jesus does not want us to live constantly in fear. We must take courage and take heart, because courage is one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And if we encourage, go forward to worship our Lord and receive him 
in the form of his body and blood and the sacrament of the Eucharist. The graces will abound within us and we can spread that to the world. So I encourage you to please consider at least deeply attending Mass if you haven't for a while because we are waning in the cases right now and things are opening up. But also, I encourage you to stay safe, stay healthy, take care of yourselves, take care of each other, always remain in a state of grace. And for our concluding hymn today, we will be singing that hymn of St. Kashmir, Daily, Daily, Sing to Mary. Daily, daily sing to Mary, sing my soul her praises due. All her glorious actions cherish with a heart's devotion true. Lost in wandering contemplation, be her majesty confessed. Call her mother, call her virgin, happy mother, virgin blessed. She is mighty to deliver, call her, trust her lovingly. When the tempest rages round you, she will calm the troubled seas. What gifts of heaven she has given, noble lady to our race. She the queen who decks her subjects with the light of God's own grace.